Good morning. Not my usual type of vlog today. I've come out to Padley Gorge. The noise you can hear in the background is the stream, which is in full flow. I haven't come out to do any autumn photography. I've come out to try a new filter. For those of you who watched Three Shires head vlog, I'll put a link up here somewhere, a little while ago. You may remember I managed to drop my Lee six stop filter, which was very painful because they're not cheap. And I have refrained from replacing it, partly through fear of breaking it again, and partly because I've had to spend money on other products. And the very helpful people from k and Concepts contacted me a couple of weeks ago and asked me if I'd like to do a review on this, which is their variable ND filter. Now it's a circular one, so it's a screw-in unit, which I can't use with the rest of my kit because as you know I use the Lee filter system. But I said I'd have a go because for waterfalls you tend to find or I tend to find a lot of the time I'm shooting in shaded areas so I don't need a grad filter. So that's why I've come out to Padley because I know what it's like out here and I thought this would be the perfect place to give it a try. Now I have deliberately refrained from watching other vlogs on this product because I wanted to not have any preconceived ideas and it also ties in quite nicely with people wanting to buy phot photographic equipment on a budget because yeah I mean I'd love an all singing all dancing three and a half grand full frame camera and the best filters money could buy my filters currently need replacing I can't afford to do it so I'm working with what I've got you can get equally as good images with budget equipment. I have a two-year-old D7200. My lenses are all second-hand. Um, I tend to buy second-hand lenses, but I'll always try and buy a new body. Don't ask me why, it's my logic. My tripod is new, but it is a cheaper v version of a more expensive one. It's a, an aluminium version of a carbon fibre one. Yes, I'd love a carbon fibre tripod. Can I justify it? Not really. I'm going to go down to the waterfall and do some shots. I will try and talk you through what I'm doing, but obviously it's very noisy down there, so the audio is going to get loud. I can, I can only apologise for that, but in order to show you what I'm doing, I have to talk to you while I'm down there. In the meantime, give me a minute, I will turn the camera around and we'll have a look at this. So, this is the product. It is k and Concepts ND32 variable filter and it comes in this rather nice cardboard box which is great and you lift the lid up and inside we have a plastic case let's get rid of that now I've just pulled that out and it should clip it's not a big thing but it's doing my head in that yes it's not the most expensive filter in the world but as a protective case, it needs to close properly. So that's um, a slight niggle. Inside, we have the filter and a little bit of padding. Although, hmm, maybe padding on that side as well, I don't know. Even with, yeah, even with, oh no, with the filter out, it closes properly. Okay, let's get rid of that. So, where are we? I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to make this out, but we have little markings up there, little dots to show you how far around you are turning it for the effect that you're going to get in the water, or sorry, on the water when you're shooting. Now I'm not sure if I can do this without dropping it, but the idea is you twist. So that's it at its clearest. And then as you turn it round, you can see it starting to get darker. And there, that is as dark as it gets, which as I say, I think that's equivalent to about a four or a five stop. I must admit, filter strengths confuse me, but I shot with the six stop and I don't think this is quite as strong. The rear of it is just a screwing cap or a screwing thread there. It actually feels quite a solid piece of kit. It's nice and smooth, the actual action. So yeah. We'll see how we get on with it. I'm, I am a little bit limited 
with what I can shoot, as I say, it doesn't fit my filter kit. But it is perfect for this particular scenario. Whether I could use it in an open scenario with not a great contrast between the sky and the ground area, be that water. You can probably get away with it on long exposure seascapes because there isn't a huge variance between the brightness of the sky and the water. Whether you get away with using it on somewhere like the Lake District where you've got hills and then you've got a bright sky, and that's a different kettle of fish, I think I would then need an ND grad, which would mean investing in another filter kit, which I'm really not up for doing. I need to replace my leaf filters, admittedly. I have looked at the case filters, but again, they're even more expensive than the Lee. So anyway, I digress. I'm gonna go off and have a shoot. It is very noisy down there, but I need to be able to show you what I'm doing and the results that I'm getting. And then we'll come back and have a catch up. Let's see how we get on. So that's the image or the composition that I've gone for. It is very basic because all I'm doing is trying out the filter. So as I say, we have the filter set at minimum. I'm on F11, three seconds, ISO 100. And that was the image I got. Now it does look blown out on here because of how the screen reacts to being recorded, but it isn't blown out. Quite pleased with that. Right, so that's where we were at before. And I'm now gonna just turn the filter again to its next notch. So I'm gonna up that to, I don't know, six seconds, uh, maybe seven. Keeping everything else the same, F11. Well, we've got eight seconds. I've wandered just a little bit further downstream. You can see the bridge behind me. And it's strange, I was here a year ago. Put the link up here somewhere. And the whole layout's changed. It's very strange. I can't get to where I was before. We've tried a couple of different compositions, still trying out this filter. Down here, although I can see a beautifully coloured tree in the distance, there's not a lot of colour, so I'm concentrating purely on the movement of the water. In the location I'm at now, we have a bit of light coming in through the trees overhead. I have found a very slight blue colour cast with the filter on its minimum but by moving the kelvins up to 68, I think it was, it got rid of that. I also tried the same um, composition with the filter set to its maximum, and I really like that one. They're not, not sparkling compositions, I'm just playing. And I've now focused on another composition, so let me turn you around. So, you can see the little fall here. If I go into live view, I've zoomed quite a way in. This thing will focus. Oh, that's probably as good as it's going to get. And I'm just concentrating on the waterfall itself with a little bit of greenery around here. Now, I have got that set at two seconds, F11, ISO 100, and I have the ND filter at its minimum. So let's see what happens with that. <laughs> Somebody's turned the heating up. Crikey, it's warm. I've got about four layers too many on here. Oh. So I've had a good wander downstream. I've come back up. I've been playing all the way down. Because the water is so loud, it really is difficult to talk to you down there. But I am impressed with this. If I can find a way to make it compatible with the Lee system, I'm on to a winner. I really don't want to have to go and buy a complete new filter holder system just for this. The other issue is using the circular grads, or the screwing grads rather, 
they're not always, the grad line, excuse me, isn't always where you want it to be, or certainly not where I want it to be. So for me, the screwing system isn't quite so useful as the lee system. So I'm going to have a good look into whether I can adapt this. And if I can, job sorted, I don't need a lee little stopper anymore. I say the only bugbear is that. Which is driving my FCD insane. But yeah, really good piece of kit that, I'm very impressed. And a bit of a shout out to Kevin. I've just been wandering back up and I bumped into a jolly nice chap called Kevin. And we stood and had a chat for a few minutes about various things, including full frame. And I don't shoot full frame. I have no real desire to go full frame. I don't see the benefits of it for me. There's a huge outlay. There is upgrades on your lenses. I have two lenses that would be compatible with it, but my go-to which is the 17 to 55 wouldn't fit. So it's not only the initial outlay on the camera, it's the upgrades on your lenses. I don't make money from my photography. If I was Thomas Heaton, then maybe S full frame would be the way to go. But certainly the D7200 is way better than I am still. I'm gonna wear it out before I get better than it is. But anyway, I'm digressing. This filter, I would have no hesitation in recommending it definitely it's going to stay in my bag until such times as I, I really can't live without the filters that go on top with the the grads on it I did miss the polarizer but I know you can get a screwing polarizer I might invest in screwing polarizer from these guys on the basis of how good this is so yes as I say I won't ever recommend anything I haven't used I've pointed out the flaws and there's only two that I can see so yeah good bit of kit. So that's it, a bit different to my normal vlogs. The autumn colour is kind of in full flow but there's still a bit to go so maybe the next couple of weeks we'll see the the real onset of the autumn colours and I shall be out and about again. So thanks for watching, have a great weekend and I'll catch up with you next Sunday. Bye for now! <laughs>